Yeah, and we're back. Alrighty, we are not back again. <laughs> no, I'm Just not like a word. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mess. Just a mess. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Um, I just want to interject really quickly and say, Kiefer, we looked up the Microtech loot, and I didn't know it by name, but I have seen that knife, and it is a nice looking. Microtech. Yeah, it's just it's got a beautiful belly on it, for sure. Yeah, looks very uh, very functional. Because that's what you say to another. <laughs> <laughs> that's how words work. Okay. Hey, bro, that looks pretty functional. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Worst intro to a porn ever. Oh, <laughs> How do I look, baby? Functional. Functional. <laughs> functional. That's terrible. That is so terrible. I'm sorry That's I said it. you know it. the date has gone wrong. <laughs> like, like like, oh, look at the time. I, I, I'm late. I gotta go. That, in all seriousness, no, the, the, I kind of wish the L-U-D-T led led let it yeah i <coughs> wish i could get that in a manual because i actually really like the profile of that knife it looks comfy yep so keep saying it's very thin behind the edge which nice that's what i like to hear um this is another pull it's not so much a verse well i mean, I guess it is a versus but it's not it's not knife fight to the death versus we should, we should have really it as kind of one of the options. <laughs> Just knife fight your boxes to the death? It's the percentage, yeah. In this corner of the box. So, for our fifth surprise round, we bring you the option of keeping your boxes versus getting rid of your boxes. <laughs> there's, there's, there's no innuendo there none no 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 we're strictly talking about these things <laughs> and unsurprisingly to me at least and i'm pretty sure that to the rest of you guys 83 percent of people said keep them 83 As you should. yeah <laughs> i'm sure there's a um uh what's his name advanced knife bro joke in there about guys not using their their shit um but I keep all the boxes. If, it, if it's a nice knife, I keep the box. If it's a knife that I'm, I know I'm going to beat the piss out of and I don't care, then I may not keep that box. I think the for, only ones that I don't keep are like my throwing toys. Yeah, mm. that's correct. Anything yep. that I buy to throw, the boxes get thrown away. I don't care. Exactly. Is it weird that I don't usually keep my um, cold steel boxes? No, I toss most of mine as well. The only one that yeah. I've the only one that I've actually kept and it might be around here somewhere is the box for this guy. And the only reason I keep it is because it comes with bubble wrap and cardboard that I can use to protect this excellent aluminum <laughs> mirror polish mirror polish finish because it's aluminum. It's gonna get scratched to shit otherwise. But everything That's else fair. like it, it's incidental whether I keep it or not. Um, so for the record, coming from the guy that snaps it open one-handed with enough centrifugal force to actually scare people. <laughs> scare knife guys. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the important I mean, part. He needs to protect that sexy, sexy mirror polish. Tool. Oh, yeah. I have I have yet to throw that knife. Uh, stay tuned. No, I'm not, I'm not throwing that knife. Kiefer saying the dollarka does not come in a box. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure he's talking about the uh, like dollar store special that looks a lot like the Delica with the yeah. plastic thumb stud instead yeah. of a spidey hole. You got to cut the clam pack open to get it right. So you know you, the you clam get... packs clam packs more likely to catch it than the knife is. <laughs> Oof, indeed. Um, but yeah, so I said eighty three percent. Thirty people voted they keep the boxes. Six voted that they don't. I was monster. And so, now we're going to shame. Well, actually, <laughs> I'm curious now. Are they people like Dennis, who, or I guess all of us, I think, have one of these guys, right? Those uh, pouches? Like, yeah. for the people that don't keep the boxes, do you bother with an alternative storage method that's, like, compartmentalized yeah. for your knives? Or do you just throw your shit into a drawer uh, and hope it all fits? Because I've done both. <laughs> I, I used to... The, well, the I, six I monsters was... that throw away their boxes are also the six monsters that have a drawer in their kitchen. 
(laughs) 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 Terrible. Yes. Um, One of the answers is actually pretty funny, and I'm going to get there. Um, But I used to store all my my knives in my pantry, of all things, um, literally lined up on the spine, Mm. just side by side. Because I didn't have any other where anywhere else to store them where I could keep them not touching and rubbing and banging into each other. But I think I want to get another at least at least another one, if not two more, of those cases like you've got, so I can slide everything away and I I need, I need to, protected. I need to buy a few more as well. I uh, I filled that up a lot quicker than I thought I was going to. <laughs> yep. That's it. Um. So are, are we going to play the shame game? <laughs> and to be honest, there's a few on here that I think I can rationalize. Okay. Um, Let's start with the more rational ones first, then. Most definitely. The most rational one right off the hop is Everyday Caleb. Um, and if you've seen him you like with his knives and his photos and stuff like that, most of his photos are of his knife either on a job site or in the process of getting the shit beat out of them, chopping mm-hmm. stuff up. Right. <clears throat> um, I think, you know, like, if, if you're looking at your knife like a, like a user, I'm going to use this, I'm going to abuse it, I'm not worried about its resale value and stuff like that, the box becomes much less of a priority. Yeah. <clears throat> um, the other person that I can rationalize is... Uh, a guy named Adam Simon from Ontario, a uh, guy that I know through like a friend of a friend of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think Adam likes knives, definitely. Like, and he, we've definitely had some good conversations about knives, but I don't know how deep into this obsession that we all are. You, you know what I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I definitely, like none of my Kershaws that I bought, I never kept one of those boxes. I, never, I don't think I've ever kept a CRKT box. Um, and that's not necessarily a comment on those companies, but that's at the time I wasn't thinking about it. Right. Um, the ones I have kept were ones that I bought that were already discontinued and I bought them because they were rarities Mm -hmm. and they did have the box. And so I continued to keep the box because they were rarities and I'm not going to carry them. Right. So things like, yeah. The, the blue anodized vapor um, or the wild turkey, especially this little guy. Yeah, I love that knife. Just a quick shout out to Kiefer. Um, he's heading to bed. Work comes early. Have a good night, brother. For sure. Thanks for joining us, mate. Take care, man. That's it. Um, yeah, See I you. think like where I really started focusing on keeping my boxes was when I started getting into Bark River knives. And I don't know why I'm, I'm keeping those boxes other than they're really nice plain boxes. <laughs> but like, even... As far, as far as resale, Bark River is not going to like... No. Chances are that it's not going to improve your resale ability to have the box. I mean, mm-hmm. the rare exception might be something like my boot knife or something like that, right? So... Yep. But even like a condor box, this is I, this is one that actually I think I picked up from work that was in the in the back to be recycled. <laughs> um, it's just an empty box, but it's what I keep all my sharp maker stuff in. Mm-hmm. Well, they're, um, they're nice durable boxes. Yeah, that's it. I I have a couple of those fourteen thousand grit stones, and I keep a couple other things all together in there, like a diamond paddle and. Um, the eraser block and stuff like that. So having one thing you can just throw it all into, pretty yeah. awesome. Um, so I guess more on the shame train. <laughs> I don't know personally. I don't know Metal Bear thirty seven fifty three seventy five. Nor do I. Um, I'm gonna hope um, that he uh, is a other user. than other than just liking posts between back and forth. And yeah, yeah I think he is a pretty hard user. Yeah. I haven't had any direct like communication with him where I've had talks with uh, Caleb and Adam. So I feel like I can talk to at least to some degree. Oh, 
And I should mention, actually, um, John of Mississauga says he keeps every box. Uh, you need to let us know what you're carrying tonight, brother. Um, mm -hmm. But blister packs go. Boxes stay. Yeah. Receipt gets in the box. Which, if you're going to keep it for resale value, ha having a baseline of what you paid for, it's not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And blister packs are a bitch, so yeah, those go. Yeah. yeah. The only blister pack that I've ever kept was from the K-Bar um, hand fishing spool because it's such thick plastic, it is useful to just put other shit into. And, and that's and like, a, it, that's one, like I have that pieces, piece of tooling as well or whatever you want to call it. Um, and that blister pack is more like a case, really. Like it's a reusable. Yeah. It's okay. It's not so a sealed edge. It's like a but pop like open, pop shut. Old, it is. I wouldn't want to try to have to cut through it. Like I could do it, but you'd probably cut yourself because it would slow the blade down and then you <laughs> put too much force and take a finger off. Mm -hmm. And I like my fingies. I want them to stay. <laughs> well, before this gets into Paul showing us his boo boo again, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> can I tell you another one? I got this one right. <laughs> that was a bad one. Yeah. Um, another gentleman uh, was knife.edc says toss him. And uh, what am I seeing here? Yeah. Uh, he's got uh, Hinderers and some Benchmades, which, I mean, it's a Hinder and a Benchmade. Use your shit. Though both those knives, I think, can survive being used. You know what I mean? Personally, I'm of the opinion that uh, a snail trail makes a knife look nicer, especially when you get a couple of them into it. If you're, if and you're... I don't have any of them myself, but I do have to say that if you're a tops collector, you got to keep all those boxes. <laughs> yeah, you sure do. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a second there. Uh, I, uh, See that that always yeah, bothers. That always bo bothers. Tops knives don't usually come in boxes. They no. just started doing that uh, like two years ago, I think. Take wasn't your knife like, even... like, like the animal that you are. Just take it and go. Yeah. Wasn't that one of their like presentations for like the shot show? Yep. <laughs> and they were like. We've come up with this knife and this knife and this knife and boxes. <laughs> Revolutionary. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess it could be pretty what easy. Think of next. Yeah, Jesus. I guess you could easily summarize it by saying if you're planning on reselling the knives, whether because you get tired of them and you want to recycle funds into getting more knives or you want to gift them to somebody, you hold on to the boxes. Or you're like Dennis and you just want to have as much shit as came with the knife as possible because you, you got to have the complete collection. <laughs> I will also say in, in EDC's <laughs> favor, um, his profile, at least half, if not more, of his photos are outdoors. So mm -hmm. in that case, throw the boxes away. They don't, they don't need to exist. They take up a lot of space. That's the I don't have my Trailmaster box. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? I, think, yeah, yeah. I, I was gonna say I bullshit. I, no, no, because that's the, like it was like they're really cheap, thin cardboard boxes, isn't it? Or did it come in like my like SRK box now? I'm pretty sure that my cold steel box came in a very different box than your, or Trailmaster came in a very different box than yours. That's probably true. Just because of the a couple difference. steels farther and, along, isn't it? Yeah. And my joking thought to that is, well, your Trailmaster box is your coffin, so. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have your box yet, yeah. <laughs> that comes later. If, if you already have bought your casket, you're doing life wrong. Don't do that. <laughs> Unless you, like, just feel like you're a vampire, in which I'm not going to shame you. Be a vampire. <laughs> I might shame you a little bit. <laughs> just... Can in I this case, my head without hurting somebody else's feelings? <laughs> um, the best answer, though, to the Tossum question uh, was AD Knives, which is a purveyor of all sorts of lovely Damascus options. 
um, that you can see on probably 15 or 20 different Instagram profiles at any given time. I'm pretty sure they're all the exact same photos. They may not be in the same order, but they're all the same photos. Um, and he says, toss the boxes. And I'm going to assume that's because you're not getting a box with these knives. <laughs> and if you are... No, it's because he wants you to destroy the evidence. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. No, they have a clause in their return policy. If you don't have the box, they won't take the return. Uh, um, <laughs> Throw it yeah. away. Throw it away. That's how they get you. So one of those, um, like, mass-produced, scammy Damascus knife accounts that's on Instagram apparently had someone else's, like, I want to say it was, like, David Lynch's Bowie's, Ooh. something like that, on. Really? And he called them out on being like, oh, you're selling my products now, are you, type of thing. So, wow. Wow. Yeah. There's probably been some changes to that latest account to be very nondescript domestic stuff that you can find on eBay for 90 cents. How but, yeah. upset would you be if you placed an order for something you thought was going to look like a proper custom and mm -hmm. one of these options showed up at your door? And honestly, no, this whole market is targeted towards people who don't know what they're buying. That's okay, no, that's how they make their money. Let's correct. Let's I correct you. Fuck you. <laughs> now, okay, no, but you're let's, you're let's you're not the target market though. You're you're both a guy. Of you are, both of you are overlooking the fact that neither no one's ever going to see a knife from these companies. Yes, they're right. randomly posting pictures of knives on their account trying to get your some sort of payment get a payment and then never, you will never see oh, any from, one of those knives regardless of how crappy damascus they are or if, how nice they are the, i will, I will say, say they they did try and contact me today on our instagram page um and i just deleted the uh, message because it didn't seem like anything worth getting into um yeah. but i was I was really tempted to ask for some samples um, mm. for testing because a Cause nice honest review fun. would have. Uh... I really wish I could remember who it was on Instagram, but recently they led one of these companies on for a while with like really ridiculous Lying. questions of like. I need to fight oh, dwarves uh, because they take my wives. That guy. Yeah, like how well will these <laughs> defend that? my family against the pygmies? That's the pygmies. <laughs> That's the pygmies. That's Jesus. Out of out in Ontario, right? Yes, I can't hey. remember who. Mm -hmm. uh, Desk whiskey. Yes, yeah, I believe you're correct. Nice. Yeah, very nice. I believe so. Yeah. Was Desk whiskey like, or whiskey? They've come whiskey. in. They've come in and stolen many of my wives. I need many knives to protect myself. Like he just and went all of my chickens. <laughs> all of my chickens. <laughs> and just kept changing the the goalpost. It was perfect. Oh, and so and the, the scammy seller, you like you could tell English isn't your first language. Mm -hmm. So they're translating to be like, oh yes, it will help you good. Yes, you can protect all of your wives with these knives. Just like, yeah. going along very, with it. Very wonderful for defense knife. <laughs> oh wow. It was fantastic. Just that give was, me your credit card number, some, please. Yeah. What's that, Paul? I said just give me your credit card number, please. Yeah. yeah. And I, I imagine the ones on Instagram are pretty scammy. You're never going to see a knife. But I know you can buy these knives on eBay. I know you, you can get the physical knife shipped to you. And I forget who did a review mm -hmm. video. I can't remember if it was Advanced Knife Bro or somebody else who got a Pakistani Damascus knife. Yeah. Look, I'm not saying it's functional, <laughs> but it is a pretty knife. At, at least you can say it is actually folded steel. That's probably the best <laughs> thing you can say about that knife. There's antler on here. <laughs> the best and thing you can say about that knife is that there's Damascus steel in it. <laughs> Just it's not genuine deer horn stag antler. <laughs> yes, deer horn. <laughs> it's all about the deer horn. Yeah. Jesus. Deer horn's my uh, favorite. We're talking 440 stainless, quick release, and now, I don't believe this. Is this the staghorn handle at this price? It is, yep. It's the staghorn. At this price? You have got to be kidding me. That's got to be some kind of mistake right now. I know the lines are busy, people, but keep dialing in. If you want a truly exceptional knife, just slice up your friends in their sleep. 
I will say that that knife probably is actually right sharp right now because it hasn't actually cut anything. No, 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 no. I had you sharpen it for me, and then we tried to do some feather sticking, um, and it dulled right out on the feather sticking, and I haven't bothered nope. to put a knife back on it because I don't carry this thing because it's functional. I have so four hundred knives in my pocket that I can use. If it was one of those great big huge hemp ropes, you would have had zero cuts. Yeah. <laughs> a third. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. you had to spin out the edge for me to uh, make it even remotely functional. Paul, we uh, we tested the oh, hardness. There is so much burr on this right now. <laughs> oh. Paul, we, we tested the hardness on that knife, did we not? We might have. Yeah, there looks like there's some scratches here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it, like 55? It was like 55 on the high end. It was Because all I have is like the range hardness files. Um, but yeah, it was below 55. Quite honestly, uh, the fact that it was hardened at all is a little surprising. <laughs> I was expecting it to come completely annealed. But I think when you harden it, you get better uh, um, contrast. Damascus yeah. looks. Yeah, get better contrast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would probably be the case. Did so you, I'm gonna. Did you keep, <laughs> did you, did you, well. Paul, did you keep the box for this? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Sorry, I had to ask. I do have a couple root boxes randomly, but those are because um, they're knives potentially for a giveaway. Um, so I figured I'll keep them until they get given away, so I can send them in the box. Mm -hmm. I didn't have either one of the boxes for the steel wheel modus or the pub well the no. pub just came in one of those plastic sleeves so yeah i have a qsp box that i was wearing today yeah i got one of those somewhere yeah and like it's a nice box i i might not keep it forever but i might end up using it for something else or shipping something else out or something like that you know what i mean mm -hmm. Really confused somebody sent about some Damascus, um, but in the QSP box, so they get really excited and then disappointed. Oh, like, like life. then they open it up and they're like, Oh, deer horn, that's terrible, <laughs> genuine deer horn, genuine <laughs> stag horn antler, but genuine is spelled incorrectly, <laughs> genuine, it's it with genuine. an eye, genuine, <laughs> indeed. Uh, on to the next, this is actually a question. So we're, we're to the question portion of the evening. Oh, geez. Um, we got asked four questions for both of the topics that we put up to you guys. Um, and the question, the first question of the night is, um, ask us about budget knives. And Mr. Fisk is the first response and it's Mr. Fisk. So it's always going to run the border of I'm making a joke, but it's a legitimate question and it's a good question and I like it. The question is, why would you want one? So and, because you're just getting into the knife world. Yeah. For those of us who are already uh, knee deep, as it were, in this world where maybe we don't typically consider. Well, Did some of us are knee deep. deep. I'm talking about for me, my knives would come up to my knees. For you, you'd probably be drowning. Uh, <laughs> As for Mr. Fisk, when he gets to debate between which Sabenza he's going to carry that day. <laughs> that's that's the thing. I don't think anyone here really seriously considers a knife under $100 these days. Not not often. Mm -hmm. I have a QSP knife that I was just talking about. It was not like 40 bucks. often. 40 is what at it, most. Not often is what I'm saying. It's one of those things where you're used to things like M390, you're used to things like S30V, you don't really want to go back down to Oz8 or, you know, comparable steels. No. I will carry a, um, like a 14C28 Sandvik uh, Rook as a backup knife or as a secondary or tertiary or, <laughs> I don't know, how do you say that? But for Quadrary. Four. Yeah, but, um, yeah. Four, four or five and four or six. Um, Quinterary? Hexagonary? 
Centurary. <laughs> but then hexagonary is a little too much like gonorrhea. Yeah. So, <laughs> so nobody likes that. Um, Only ten times. <laughs> or one of the knives that will make it into my pocket, and I do have a nice rook that definitely make has more pocket time than the more budget friendly rooks. Um, yeah. But I think there's a couple steels that are still worth, even in that like low end where I don't have to put a stone to it. If I strop it on a regular basis, I can keep Sandvik steel, whether it's 14C or 12C. I can keep it sharp forever. And I think that's kind of, like, budget... And I think the little, like, 662 that me yeah. and both bought recently, they were so cheap that it was just like, you know what? Yeah, grab one of those. It's easy decision to make. And if it gets gifted somewhere along the way, if it comes and goes, it's not the end of the world, but it's a cool little knife for the price that it is. Instead of thinking about investments on Sabenzas and Num Num Zans and uh, <laughs> yeah. Rhinos and Wee Knives and whatever we get into, right? So and there's it also- is a knife that I would freely give to anybody that wanted one, like one of like friends and family and stuff like that. If they saw it in my pocket, they're like, well, I like that. It's yours. Yeah, you're. Yeah. But I'd probably go and buy another one. So I had it in my pocket for the next friend that was like, wow, that's nice. So <laughs> that's it's the other perfect. exception to buying a budget knife would be the, the come and go factor, the easy to gift out to get someone mm-hmm. into knives, the, that type of idea, right? So <laughs> I can use it, I can free. enjoy the it. first so. taste is free. <laughs> <laughs> me and Uncle on the same page there, yeah. Um, for me, I'll give kind of... Think- I don't think taste is the uh, adjective I would have used. Rub that yeah, 662 on your gums, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me, I'll give a, a more specialized answer. It uh, comes down to kind of a gimmick. Like, do you really like the design of something? Does it annoy your coworker to no end? These are reasons why <laughs> you why you might buy such a knife. Um, I like different mechanisms, so I'm kind of a sucker for that. I'll buy them, but... It's also, it, it is nice to have a knife where it's like, you know what, if there's a shitty cutting task and I just need to not care about what happens to this knife, uh, it's nice to have. Like, actually, the uh, the Recon 1 with uh, S35 in, in the Tonto, this thing I've reefed on and just done really stupid shit that you really shouldn't be doing with a folding knife um, because it has a triad lock, because it's easily replaceable, because I got it for pretty cheap as well. I could see, I could see the application for budget knives that. Okay, you... okay, 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 but that's not necessarily a budget knife just because you got it at a budget. No, price. Yeah, but, no, I no, wouldn't. I but, wouldn't class that as a budget. No, no. What mm-hmm. I'm saying is, well, budget that is relative too. Later. Because I'd be okay. happy. The question is question's coming, coming later. later. Yeah. See, the okay. thing is too, I wouldn't mind rebuying this at whatever it is, 150, 160 bucks. Because to me, that's still cheaper than what I'm typically looking at if I'm buying a new knife for myself. Uh, just for the types of materials I'm interested in. These days, they tend to go over 200 bucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That, that's cool for your justification, but that's still not a budget knife. No, yeah. but the, it's, the, a budget the good budget, it's a budget option for S35, but it's not a budget nut. I suppose, but I also keep that in the same category. I have the real steel Griffin because it's it's 14C aluminum handles button lock. It's I can really use it hard. 14C is a very tough steel. I'm not worried about damaging it, and if it does get broken or whatever, whatever, it's a seventy dollar knife. But on, but on a North American market, those knives are too, like, half the price of the other. For what, sorry? I didn't catch that. On the North American market, those two knives are half the price of the other one. Yeah, but they're both within yeah. that same category for me. And that's kind of my point, is everybody's going to be exist in different fields. There's some people who the most expensive knife they own is going to be that Recon 1. They're not going to buy anything uh, at that $200 price point or higher. Uh, they're, they're the type of person who maybe has only ever owned Chinese-made Kershaws and CRKTs. Like, that's not the budget knife to them. But then there's people like Mr. Fisk who have, like, way too many nice knives. <laughs> it's all relative. Like your face. Mm. <laughs> I don't sure. know what that means. Ahsoka <laughs> Man. agrees with us, saying that if he was to introduce knives to someone to start, 
Rook knives are a great way to do it. They do 14C really well, which I have yeah, to agree with. They do. I have plenty of knives from them in my collection that I have not yet sharpened because I strop them on a regular basis and they just yep. stay scary sharp, shaven hair. Okay, but even even down to like a Kershaw in particular, mm-hmm. um, especially the spring assisted stuff, to, to get someone to initially be like, oh, this is cool as far as the knife world goes. Now, whether you're 16 years old or whether you're 25 years old or whether you're 35 years old, the first time you play with a spring-assisted knife, at least in Canada because we don't have exposure to those, (laughs) or even down in the States, the first time you play with an automatic, you're like, oh, that's fun. Mm -hmm. Or like a a semi-decent one, right? So am I ever going to personally buy a spring assisted Kershaw? Probably not anytime soon type of thing. Right. Really? Um, I think, I think you're wrong there, but we won't go there. Not a spring assisted Kershaw, maybe a spring assisted ZT, but those are two different companies. I know there's one one particular one that you're thinking of. (laughs) Oh, there is one. Ray aluminum. (laughs) (laughs) After all of that, I put my foot in my mouth. Yeah. 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 A little bit. Um, but would you kind of wear a budget knife? Would you what, sorry? Uh, the no, I never would. No, I wouldn't. That's like an upgrade. You go from your like... They should be, but they're not. Cryo 2. Yeah. A standard blur should be a budget knife, but it's not. Yeah, yeah it's, it's yeah. just on the other side of the line. What would like you call... Like it's not even on the fence. It's just tipped. What would you call the broken skull? Same position. It, it's yeah, so... same thing as it should be a budget knife, but it's just over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same as a recon, because the, the, it... the, the Broken Skulls and the Recons are in a similar price point. Are they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought the Broken Skull was uh, considerably cheaper. Like, um, like 50 bucks cheaper. Variation. It depends on the variation. Like, when they were XHP-based... Oh, no, um, sorry. I, I mean the S35 uh broken skull compared to the s35 recon now there is a price difference with the s35s but on the xhp levels broken skull and a recon were still pretty competitively priced with each other yeah uh with s35 for some reason they were like no we get to charge more for a recon because it's our (laughs) flagship probably so being a platform knife i can charge a premium for yeah because they know people will pay ultimately they discontinued the broken skull so that tells you something too right so yeah yeah it's a shame because that knife is awesome and yep. it's everything that I like about the Buck 110, but it's a third the thickness. I was going to say, in, the buck in, one, less than half the weight. In a form factor you're willing to carry, yeah. But then the Buck 110 made a slim micarta with S30 with a Paul mm-hmm. Moss. And I'm going to own one of those too, because... <laughs> in a slim <laughs> profile. And that probably was what killed the Broken Skull, is because anyone who liked the Broken Skull was because it was a slim Buck 110. More or less, mm. like it's yeah. I so, wonder. I wonder how well. I wonder how well they could have kept sales going had they kept XHP specifically with the broken skull. Whether or not they could have logistically because of the uh, the scarcity of that particular steel at the time, but because the uh, well, but no, the problem is, is if they do that, then they were going to have a giant uproar on why don't you do it with this knife? Why don't you do it with this knife? Why don't you do it with this knife? Type I guess. Thing, right? Yeah. So, which is why they changed it across the board, I would assume. Which is why you bought that giant thing that's in your pocket, Joe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Six inches of XHP is hard to say no to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Paul's, so, saying, Paul's too many not saying no to course. six inches pulled out of Joe's pocket. Yeah, out of my pocket. <laughs> yeah, think about it. No, I don't want to. <laughs> too late. Yeah, it's all. Well, I mean, <laughs> the other one as well is the the ultimate hunter that yeah. I have. That, with, yep. with, yeah. that's that's a good the, the XHP with that as well. So I mean, yeah, there was some options out there that, like I said, as soon as you put it in a broken skull, I'd be like, but green structure, thin this behind the edge, blah blah blah. It should be XHP, right? So yeah, no, yeah. should be. Yeah. More knives should be made out of XHP, if I'm being perfectly honest. On that topic, actually, uh, Sheepdog7 says, uh, what's the best budget steel? Actually, I'm going to interject before we get on to next topic or next question. We should probably get onto a quick break here. 
because it's pushing on another oh, 45 wow. minutes. Jesus, Maybe. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A uh, quick break, and but we'll keep that uh, question in the uh, batting cage there. So mm-hmm. that's exactly um, it. I will say we're going to all answer individually, but I'll leave it off on uh, go back and watch our video because that's so funny. <laughs> Not yeah, right now yeah. because we'll lose a viewer and it's live and we can't afford to do that, but la- later. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's it. So yeah, we're just going to have a quick break here, refresh our drinks and all that fun times. We will be back shortly with you all.